Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I am here with a slightly belated August wrap up. I do apologize for two things. Number one, if you can hear yard work because everyone on the street has decided to do their yard work today and because my allergies are in full swing so I'm not feeling quite myself and I'm really quite dehydrated. So I managed to read eight books in August, which is pretty decent. I'm going to start with the two arcs that I read first, otherwise I may forget about them. The first one was Trouble by Lex Croucher, and I was thrilled to be outright offered a copy of this arc. I have loved reading Lex's various Regency YA I, get, I think they're YA, romances over the course of the last couple years. And this one took a really interesting turn. They always feature LGBTQ characters, but this time it, an LGBTQ romance was not at the center, which honestly took me by surprise. This book was very clearly inspired by The Sound of Music, but with a slight twist, which is that our heroine goes to a very isolated manor to be governess to the two children of a widower who is also a former Navy captain, I believe. However, she has no training as a governess. Her sister is far better suited to being a governess. And indeed, she is the one who is supposed to go However, she is extremely ill, so our heroine takes off in her stead and under her name. Various intrigues and subplots unfold once she arrives, and it was a fun book. That's, that's about as much as I can say for it. It was a fun book though I did feel like all of the action in the second half was really quite quick, and all of the action in the first half was a little bit slower. I feel like that balance could have been slightly more even, but still a fun, enjoyable Regency realm. The other arc I read was Jezebel by Megan Barnard, and this retells the biblical story of Jezebel, from her perspective. This was another book that I was fascinated to read because honestly, I don't know the story of Jezebel. And I think based on what I do know that she gets very little mention in the Bible herself. She only gets a couple of lines. This book fleshes out where she comes from, the religion of her kingdom, how she was raised from the time she was a small child, the ambition that she had from the time she was a small child, and how that ambition grows and develops as she is essentially sold into marriage to the king of Israel, who I believe was Ahab, and her relationship with the man who will become the prophet Elijah, and her incredible rise before her downfall. I found it really interesting Though again, I found the ending a little bit rushed, a little bit sudden, but a very interesting read nonetheless. Then in terms of physical books, I finished Framley Parsonage by Anthony Trollope, which I really enjoyed using the audiobook to get me into the story itself really helped and I got much further forward than I did in January. And it was a very enjoyable addition to the Barset Shrew series, which is about as much as I can tell you. I did find some of the relationships in this really tedious, really stressful, but then again I think that was the point. I am beginning to tire of church politics, and I'm really hoping that that lets up at least a little bit in the small house at Allington. Then I also read Goodbye to Berlin by Christopher Isherwood which I've been dying to read for ages because A, it is the inspiration for Cabaret and I Am A Camera, and it's also incredibly autobiographical, especially if you've read Christopher and His Kind, which is Isherwood's 
autobiography of sorts, and the two are very similar. I did not get on with Christopher and His Kind, the book at least, the series was okay. But in that book, he writes about himself in the third person and quite clearly hates himself. It's really uncomfortable to read. So I wanted to give this a try, seeing if he were writing about fictional people instead, if that discomfort would be slightly less and slightly better. And the answer is yes and no. So these are a series of basically interconnected short stories about his time in Berlin in the 1930s and the various people that he meets, like Sally Bowles, like a gay couple who's Otto and Peter, his various landladies, so on and so forth. It was interesting to see the genesis of these characters and how they were put into cabaret or how they were redrawn to form a part of cabaret, but there was still that edge of discomfort. That is also present in cabaret of watching heavily flawed people doing sometimes really awful things, not just a series of bad decisions, and not being able to do anything about it, and watching that through this lens of nostalgia it just makes for the ultimate uncomfortable read. So I'm glad that I read it, but I don't know that I'm gonna be hanging on to it. Then I went on to the much lighter Behind the Scenes with Judy Dench, which is a memoir of sorts. It involves pictures of various things that Judy has done over the course of her life and her career, and just little snippets about each photo or each experience. And it's really like having Judy Dench walk you through a photo album. And that was just terrific fun. It reinforced that I think she's a really lovely person and it clued me into some theater things that I never knew that she had done, which was very exciting and I plan to check those out later on if I can. And yeah, just a lovely, fun, light read. Yes, I have read her official memoir, but this was a lovely companion piece to it. Then I finished The King of Crows by Libba Bray, which is the last book in her Diviners series. Oh, this was a ride. This was a ride. And I can't even tell you a lot about it because it would spoil not only this book, but other things in the series if you haven't read it. But the series follows a bunch of supernaturally gifted teens from New York City in the late 1920s who are known as diviners. And over the course of the books, they become intrigued in fighting this evil that is menacing definitely the entire country, if not the world, and finding out how this came to be, how they came to have their powers, how they can then use them to try and stop this evil, all while dodging roadblocks left, right, and center. This captured so much. It captures not only the supernatural elements and the fear and the terror, but it delves deeply into the racism, the anti-Semitism, the xenophobia of the 1920s and the very white Christian counterculture movement that started there that grew into things like the KKK and eugenics and it ends on a note of looking forward to the rise of Hitler in Europe and knowing that this was written and published after years of the Trump administration where those questions were coming up again for this generation made it extra powerful on top of the emotional ride that we were taking with all of these characters. I am so glad that I took this ride. I will definitely be keeping it, but I don't know that I'm yearning to reread it anytime soon. I then moved on to Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes, which has been making the rounds on Booktube. I loved A Thousand Ships, so I was really looking forward to see how Natalie Haynes would tackle Medusa's story. And 
I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting to a point. I think the perspective she chose to take on Medusa's story of, you know, putting Zeus and Poseidon and all of the men in the tale in the wrong was really good. I felt like she chose too many perspectives, though, to tell the story from. It became very hard to keep track of who was who, and I felt like we didn't get a lot of Medusa. We got more of everybody around her, including people that ultimately didn't play a very big role in her life. So it just wasn't what I expected out of this story. That's not saying that it was bad, I just don't think it was her strongest work to date. And then finally, I picked up Travels with My Aunt by Graham Greene because the film happened to be on television one night, so I recorded it. I still haven't watched it yet, but knowing that Maggie Smith was in it made me want to pick up this book even more so I could go and watch it. Having read it, though, I'm not sure that I want to watch it now. This is the story of an older man. He's retired from a job at the bank, and he's always led a very ordinary, stoic life. But he meets one of his aunts at his mother's funeral, I think it is, who is supposed to be this absolute pistol. And he's very intrigued by her, and she ends up dragging him all over the world to help her in various ventures. That sounded really interesting from the back. As I started reading it, however, more and more problematic elements began to creep up. The aunt has a butler slash bodyguard who may or may not also be her lover named Wordsworth, who is an African immigrant. And the way he is painted and the way his speech is painted is really terrible, honestly. And then the way they speak about people of other races is just as bad. There's quite casual discussion of abortion. I feel like suicide is tossed around quite lightly. I'm not against abortion per se, but again, it's just thrown about as this light thing when it's a really difficult decision for someone to make. And I feel like that coming from a male author, a male author putting that into the mouth of a young woman is just all kinds of wrong. And all of the characters are unlikable. And this man just keeps letting himself be caught up in this web such that he can't get out. And it was very much the same feeling that I got from Goodbye to Berlin, where these characters are just stuck in these awful circumstances. And you don't want to know anymore, but you can't look away. Here, however, the racist remarks were inexcusable. There was no reason for them. At least in 1930s Nazi Berlin, there's a reason for people to be racist, even though it's not right. There was no reason for these people to be throwing out around the remarks that they were. I'm not sure if these were all meant to be unlikable heroes and heroines, but they definitely were for me. Definitely not keeping it. I'm now not sure that I want to see Maggie Smith in this role in a film. I'm very conflicted. But this hasn't stopped me from wanting to read Graham Greene because based on what I know of the plots of his other works, they might be better? I'm willing to give him that second chance anyway. And those were all of the books that I read in August. Let me know down below if you shared my thoughts of any of these books or if you have suggestions of what I should read in the future. Until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.